Voices for Victims, a Way 31 I Team special report. The Alabama parole system is under fire. The board let out a violent career criminal serving a life sentence. That convict, Jimmy Spencer, is now charged with murdering three people. The Way 31 I Team uncovered document after document revealing the broken system that let it all happen and found the victims frustrated by its failures. There, there is no integrity now. It's going to take a long time to restore this. One of the reasons Spencer's victim from the late 80s says it's going to take a long time to restore faith is the parole board's slow response to problems. The board didn't even request an arrest warrant for Spencer until he was already back in jail charged with three murders. Way 31's Breck and Terry pressed the parole board about the delay and the parole officer fooled by Jimmy Spencer. According to these documents given to us by the Department of Corrections, Spencer's parole officer was apparently duped by Jimmy Spencer. He remained in contact with him, and according to the parole officer, he thought Spencer was still in the Jimmy Hill Mission Center. But the parole officer was notified about Spencer's June 14th Sardis arrest. He was arrested on June 14th in Sardis. They did alert his parole officer, but that parole officer did not take action mm -hmm. until July 6th. Mm -hmm. Why? I haven't talked, spoke to the parole officer about the reasons for that. I know that that was something that was done in the internal file review, all those aspects of that parole and what may have, uh, what may have gone wrong in that supervision were looked at by the board and we are addressing those, any, any lapses that we find um, that were in that case will be addressed through policy changes. We filed another open records request on Spencer's parole officer, Brian Robinson. We got about 60 pages of his records where they said his parole officer exceeded expectations in his job. Yet how did he not keep up with Spencer? And why was no action taken after his Sardis arrest? And is Brian Robinson still employed with y'all? Yes, he's still employed with us. Is he on leave or anything? Not that I know of. These Department of Corrections documents also show the parole board requested an arrest warrant for Spencer on July 20th days after police arrested him for the murders in Gunnersville. At the end of the day, we, as a board, as an agency, we have to understand this, we have to move on, we have to understand that, um, that cases do go bad. As we dug into this case and revealed each problem, more tips poured into the Way 31 I team about Spencer's history. We filed an open records request for his disciplinary file while in prison. We already knew he escaped at least twice during a prior sentence in the 80s. New documents obtained by the I team showed dozens of red flags between 1994 and 2017. We sifted through 400 pages of documents detailing about 50 disciplinary actions against Spencer. They range from something as minor as having a cell phone to serious ones such as multiple fights, stabbings, even assaulting corrections officers. Way 31's Breck and Terry shows you what else we found. In total, Spencer assaulted three corrections officers in two separate incidences. He bit one officer in 2002 and tried to swing on two others with a broom in 1999. Spencer got into a total of four fist fights while in prison. In 2005, Spencer stabbed another inmate in the back. And in 1996, he stabbed two other inmates. Spencer himself was stabbed on two different occasions and often said in these documents he was being threatened by other inmates. Spencer destroyed state property on three occasions and while in a hearing for one of these offenses, the officer said he became hostile and had to be removed. In four separate reports, Spencer had knives on him or was found with the material to make knives. In eight separate reports, Spencer disobeyed corrections officers or was insubordinate. Spencer even flooded his jail cell in 2005 because he was mad. Not to mention the numerous times Spencer was found with contraband, ranging from tobacco to inmate-made whiskey. And two months after the murders of these three innocent people, Governor Kay Ivey decided to take action because of what we found. We'll show you what's next for Alabama's parole system and ask if these changes are enough.